Okay, the atomics canatony. Good morning. It is just after 8 a.m. on Thursday, September 6th, 2018, in the latter part of the lunar cycle. Pakipists, oats and dates be when the choke cherries ripen. And it's a crisp, cool morning. <laughs> so I got my flannel on. That'll be coming off this afternoon, though, because it's supposed to warm up pretty good. Um, I won't doubt that we'll have another another little slurry of uh, migrating snake calls. But for this morning, we've got at least one skunk. I'm headed over there now to Laval Boulevard. This was a trap that I just set up last night. I've got another trap to go set up this morning and it's early yet I might hear from some some other clients about some other skunks we'll see so yeah that's what's that's what's kicking it off this a.m. oh yes skunkies oh you got a lot of poopy in there huh fun <laughs> this is one of my uh, one of the traps that I inherited from a, a guy that passed away that used to run a service here in, in Lethbridge his, um, his kids gave me all his traps when he passed and I was thinking I should make it kind of a winter project to outfit all of my traps really uh, with similar kind of waterproof cardboard sidings um, makes it even easier than coming along with the tarp and throwing the tarp you know I think the skunks are even less uh, bothered when you don't have to wave the big flag in front of them first you know so yeah hey skunky you ready to get out of there yeah I'm sure you're ready all right, we're gonna do this. There's a trail right here you can kind of follow right out of the trap. Um, yeah, I thought this would be a good place to come and release this skunk. It's kind of rural West Lethbridge, uh, rather than the river bottom out in the country here a little bit, but I, I wanted to come out here um, really because I want to show you guys this spot because I'm thinking about releasing another animal out here. That being that tiger salamander that I picked up a week and a half or so ago. That salamander was out maybe a kilometer down the road here at the uh, Copperwood subdivision. And those tiger salamanders, like the snakes, are really connected with their natal places, right? So they shouldn't be removed from those places. They'll try to get back to them. Um, this place is pretty close to there and I'm, I'm hoping that this will be that the tiger salamander will perceive this place as being okay uh, this is a little moist pocket here um, where the you know obviously the agriculture has to go around it because it's just it gets too wet and uh, but right now it's dry you know so it might be good conditions for a tiger salamander to be kind of on the outskirts of a little prairie pocket like this which was probably what they were in over there before <laughs> before it was uh, destroyed for for the development of subdivisions. So hopefully if I let it go here, it'll be okay. I've just been waiting for kind of a moist day because I don't know how well he can dig in uh, without some good moisture. But if we don't get that moist day pretty soon, I'm going to have to release because it's it's getting, you know, that, that time the amphibians and the, and the reptiles are going to where they need to go for the winter so yeah well that'll be that'll be coming up that tiger salamander has been living pretty good at my house um, you know I just kind of missed the missed the enclosure once a, a day and then put a you know six or seven crickets in there and within a short period those those things are gone <laughs> um, yeah, so he's been living pretty good. I think he'll, hopefully he'll like it out here. I don't think I, I want to hang on to him, retain him for the winter or anything like that. It's, it's time to let him go. I just needed a little bit to kind of deliberate with myself where I wanted to do that, you know, um, so I could feel 
that uh, the chances were optimum that it it wouldn't um, spend all of its time trying to get back to its natal area that no longer exists. So let's let the skunk go. That little clicky sound, by the way, that you hear on my videos, like you did just there, that's the sound of um, my uh, tripod legs descending. Got a Swanson talk. And it's a Swanson talk just flew in. Landed up on that pole up there. But Swanson shouldn't be interested in uh, skunky right now. These guys, they they switch their diet to the grasshoppers once the grasshopper season begins, and they're like a hundred percent grasshopper. Um, and then they congregate and they move south. I think they go all the way to like Costa Rica or something, um, eating grasshoppers the whole way. And this whole, what is our winter season, um, all they do is eat grasshoppers. But then they're on, on their way back up north, they're eating, uh, they start eating, you know, more rodents and stuff like that. So I don't think little skunk here is in any danger of this hawk. There you go, Skunky. You can go out now. There you go. Going out. Going out. Doors open. Doors open. Go on out. Turn around and go the other way. Yeah, turn and go. You can go that way. You're free. <laughs> Skunk is confused. What do I do? What do I do? I know. This is a pretty confusing situation, bud. Just dropped off in the middle of nowhere. I'm sure you'll sort it out. Yeah, I've never had a skunk uh, <laughs> do this when I drop him out of the trap, just lay down. That's bizarre. Okay there? Yeah. Alright, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'll pack up my trap and go. And you can sort out what to do. I would go the other direction though. I don't know. Up to you. It's five o'clock in the evening now and just getting my first snake call. This one's gonna bring me back over to the Lethbridge Country Club to the 12th green, probably maybe the same snake that they had called about yesterday that, that I wasn't able to find over there, but we'll see when we get there. Hopefully they keep an eye on it this time. Over here. Oh yeah, this is a different one too. Yeah. So where is Hope again? That's that far side over there. Yeah. Yeah.
I've actually never heard one before in my life. Great. Well, we're good. Uh, you can get a yeah, close look at him if you want. All right, back at my scenic height drop-off point. This one was uh, collected from a green on this far south side of the country club, so makes sense to drop him off here. As far as I know, he's not from the other side of the river, but you know, we'll see if he sticks around here or if he's seen again. <laughs> That makes for quite a few snakes this season at the Lethbridge Country Club on the south side here. All right, buddy. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it to it. You want to come out? Come on. I know you do. There you go. Come on. Come on out. Yeah, grab a hold there. Oh, you're gonna go back in. Oh. Let's get you lifted here. You will be in kind of difficult. There we go. There's the bigger boy. <laughs> Whip into the bush here, into the skunk brush, and hopefully find his way. Yeah, I'm surprised just, just one call so far this evening, but it's been a pretty hot day, so maybe as things kind of cool down here, we'll get some more. We'll see. Spot half past six in the evening, 1830 hours. <laughs> and I'm out here between Riverstone and the canyons on that side. Um, there was a jogger that came through here just a few minutes back and phoned in about a large rattlesnake that was just off the side of the trail, dangerously close to the this asphalt trail that I'm walking. And uh, he described it as being um, near some power line poles. And the only place that could be that's along this asphalt is up at these poles over here. Um, I know because I've ran this trail many, many, many times and uh, so it could only be up there, but I've already walked past, haven't seen the snake. Um, and really, I didn't expect to when people see the snakes, you know, on the pads or just off the pads um, in the coolie areas. It's, it's often the case the snakes is just doing their thing and they're not going to stick around the path very long. It's too exposed, you know, too exposed. But... Um, but I gotta do the due diligence and come out and check it out. You know, I was so confident <laughs> that it wouldn't be here. I actually didn't even bring my hook out of the Jeep this time. Even if I even if I come across it here, it's not a big deal because I can just usher it off into the into the bush without tools. No problemo. But yeah, I don't see it. I don't think we're gonna see it. So, so that's snake call number two. We'll see if there's a third. Okay, moving on to day two for this video. Friday, September 7th at 8.30 in the a.m. Getting a start on this round and we're gonna do a flurry of skunks. <laughs> I've got three calls so far and there's potential for more. I don't know, going into day two on this video might turn out to be a mistake because this could be a busy round and make for an awful long watch, but we'll find out.
Oh yeah, he let loose. <laughs> Just seen a stain come up on the ooh, a couple more stains. Just letting it fly. Okay, we're ready for release number one. Got a fourth call as well, so it's gonna be a busy morning. All right, Skunky, you're free. You're free. <laughs> Stinky. Yes, you are. Let's do release two and three. Hey skunkies, you're free. There you go. See what he did? You can do that too. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. Heavy mama. <laughs> this is hilarious. My one client. Remember this place? We, the skunks were getting under her house here. We thought we got them all, but uh, apparently not. <laughs> They're back again, but she went on vacation when she came home. She found her niece had uh, left this in her house. <laughs> skunk rug. All right, Skunky. Hi, Hi Ryan. Hey. Oh, he's got his tail up. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Here oh, you're go. getting smart. Here we go. You got a cover. Oh, I always have oh, a cover. Oh, you always have? Oh. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't always keep you from getting... Yeah. Zap, look at all this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at his tail. He's pissed. He is mad. It's okay. It's okay. Number four, I think we're done with skunks. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon now and I am on Badger Patrol. This strip here um, that runs this pathway along University at the intersection with Columbia, um, there was a report that came into City Hall about a badger that was digging a lot of holes beside the trail, scaring people and their dogs, charging and um, Anyway, people are people are scared of the badger, so I came out here to kind of scope it out, see what the situation is, and uh, what I think we might do about it. See right in here, there's some evidence. This is badger digging, probably digging for ground squirrels, because there's a whole colony of ground squirrels through here. Look, he's digging, digging, and this he's really burrowed in. So there's definitely evidence. Up here there's some more. Check this out. This is just on the property of these uh, apartments here. But we have again what was a ground squirrel hole dug by a badger now. This is definitely a badger hole going in here. Might even be hanging out in there for how big it is. Um, and there's another hole just over here. Probably if I went up this way, I'd find evidence of him, you know, digging at different ground squirrel holes. 
So I'm thinking a secluded place to uh, to set up a trap might even be in this under this Russian olive tree. That's on the city side of the of the uh, property line here, so I won't have to ask any permission from the apartment complexes, and um, I can just set it up, you know, right in like this, right in under here where you know most people walk and probably aren't going to notice. And um, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll bait it with some sardines <laughs> and uh, see if we can catch a badger. Okay, so my trap is set up here. Not too conspicuous for people going by. Looks like something's in there, but it might be a plastic bag or whatever, you know, I don't know. Hopefully my trap doesn't walk away. But there it is, baited with sardines right near the uh, some of the badger evidence. So we'll see. Probably catch more cats than anything, but <laughs> it's worth a shot. I just have to uh, stop by on all my, you know, every round that I can and monitor the trap myself. All right, it's now 5.30 in the evening and we got a call from the Lethbridge police um, up here at the fueling station by Highway 3 and the Highway 25 overpass, uh, they've got a rattlesnake. So I'm going to go pick that up for them and move it down to Bridge Drive. Um, and he kind of went it, went underneath there. So he poked his, he kind of poked his body there, poked his head from the other side. Mm -hmm. And right now I don't know where he is. I don't know if he's still underneath or So just this concrete barrier here, hey? Another female, I believe. Don't know if I've seen her before because I haven't caught too many of the snakes that belong to this clan out here at Bridge Drive. But this is where some of the giants are. Of course, this is not one of them <laughs> yet. all upset reasonably so there we go there's the snake whoa, whoa, whoa. I know that's not comfortable wiggling the tail trying to stay balanced let's let you go over here Possibly, speculatively, our last snake of the night. Um, 
It's 8 o'clock and we got a call from the Lethbridge Country Club of all places. <laughs> I can't believe how many snakes I'm picking up there, you know, this last couple of weeks. But I'm really curious to find out if this is one that we've picked up there before because that's going to make a big impact on my decision about where to release it. So we'll see. We'll check that out. Sorry for the late call. No, it's all right. This is not too late compared to some I've got. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Porcupine waddling right over there. Yeah, just about to the drop off point here um, for this guy. So I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see because it's so dark off in the distance. University's hosting a big party for uh, all the incoming students finishing their first week of studies. Now it's time to get binge drunk. <laughs> oh yeah, they're partying it up over there. Um, all right, let's just leave the snake out here. This is close to the dens and a bit away from the houses. Good enough for me. is the same I looked at I looked him over at the country club this is the same snake that we picked up yesterday that I dropped in scenic heights so he's obviously trying to get across the river I've uh, given him a boost brought him across and hopefully now he'll be happily home let me see buzzing in there somewhere. There he is. There he is. Hey bud. Gotta take your picture again. For the record that you were the same one. Believe it or not, got one more. Going to the University of Lethbridge. There's a rattlesnake inside one of the buildings, probably the mechanical shops. It's down at the fourth level, so. One more snake. Did you need something? Yeah, you can't come down there. There's a rattlesnake right now. Yeah, you'll have to go in inside. How you doing today? Good, how are you? Oh, big event going on. Yeah, this will be an exciting night for you guys. Uh, not too bad so far. Yeah, well it's early yet. Yeah. <laughs> so we have 
just a baby snake. It was inside and then it was able to get be coaxed out. Oh yeah, they fall through that. On this side, though. They go through that great tick. Oh yeah. Did he start out? He started he was inside, inside here. Yeah, I don't know how he got in though, because like these doors are pretty. Tight. Yeah, that's. I thought maybe you went in through that mechanical room, but when I see he's on this side, I said, hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. He. Uh, I kind of just. I mean, it's so small. I was able to kind of open it. Right. Slow it out. I figured it'd be help. easier to control <laughs> control the situation out here than inside with all the kids. Right. So I know somebody's going to ask, why is he using the bucket again? And the reason is I thought it was inside of the building. That's what they reported. So using the big transport case through the building is a little more difficult than the bucket. Anyway, this is just a little yearling. And it looks like a yearling male. Yeah. So I'm just going to grab his picture here on the uh, whoop, safe zone of the sidewalk before I go into the snake zone for the release. Cool. Let's go let him go. <laughs> 